Hello everyone, and welcome back to Total Organic Chemistry. In this video, I will be taking a look at the chromium-based oxidations of alcohols to carbonyl compounds. So by the end of this video, the questions that you should be able to answer for yourself are how can I oxidize an alcohol to a carbonyl, and which reagents can we use that are more selective than other reagents? If you'd like a little bit of review on sort of the opposite reaction, so the reduction of carbonyl compounds to alcohols, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel, and also take a look at that previous video. Okay, so last video I talked about the reduction of acetone as an example compound to isopropyl alcohol. This time we will study the oxidation of isopropyl alcohol here to acetone, and the way we're going to do that is with a couple different reagents. So we have this dichromate compound, so in this case potassium dichromate, but it can also be accomplished with the sodium salt, for example. And we're going to use a mixture of sulfuric acid in water. And this is going to oxidize this secondary alcohol to a ketone, so with alkyl groups on either side of that carbonyl. So that's our secondary alcohol. But what if we take a look at a tertiary alcohol, so terp-butyl alcohol here, and if we subject it to the same conditions, so potassium dichromate, sulfuric acid, and water, what would that make? So we could maybe imagine hypothetically just changing that single bond to the oxygen to a double bond, so converting it into a carbonyl compound. But that should set off some warning signs for you. So we have a pentavalent carbon, so we have five bonds to carbon. And that is very, very rarely encountered in organic chemistry, to the point where anytime you see carbon with five bonds, that should be a problem. So this reaction actually will not occur. So we know that tertiary alcohols will not be oxidized under these conditions. Looking the other way, we could see a primary alcohol, so ethanol here. Again, very same conditions, potassium dichromate and aqueous sulfuric acid. And you might imagine this could go to the aldehyde, so with a double bond to oxygen and then a hydrogen on here, so just basically converting that single bond to a double bond to oxygen. However, what will actually happen under these conditions is we will over-oxidize to the carboxylic acid. So we'll actually add another oxygen atom onto this compound. So primary alcohols with this oxidation are converted to the carboxylic acids. Okay, so I've given you a lot of information right off the bat. Let's look at the mechanism for how this oxidation occurs. So we'll start with our secondary alcohol, that's the simplest one. And so we have isopropyl alcohol here. And the reason we have the dichromate as well as the sulfuric acid in water is that under those conditions we form another compound, another chromium compound, which is called chromic acid. And so I can draw that out here. We have a chromium-6 base, so I'm explicitly going to write out the oxidation state of chromium. And then these two double bonds to oxygen as well as two hydroxyl groups. So if you know the Lewis dot structure for sulfuric acid, you can notice that this is a very, very similar compound. So it is what we call isoelectronic. So it has the same electron configurations around that central atom. In aqueous solution, these two compounds, so the alcohol and the chromic acid, will be in equilibrium with this compound here, where we have lost a net molecule of water to form this chromate ester, which is what it's called. So we have an oxygen that is bonded to the alkyl group of our alcohol, as well as to that chromic acid structure. And this is the mechanism of the oxidation here. So we have a molecule of water that will come in since we're in an aqueous environment, and it will pull off that hydrogen, so that oxygen will form a bond to this adjacent hydrogen atom, and that carbon-hydrogen bond will come up here to form a double bond with the oxygen atom, and then this bond here to chromium will actually come off, it will go to the chromium atom, 
And then because now chromium has too many electrons around itself, so we're going to swing this bond to oxygen up to the oxygen atom itself. And so this is the main part of the mechanism. And if you'll notice, this is actually an E2-like reaction. So we have our water is our base, and it is abstracting the adjacent proton. And then at the same time, in one concerted step, we have that bond making a double bond to oxygen. And then the leaving group in this case is the chromate anion. And so what we end up with is our oxidized alcohol. So now we end up with a ketone, in this case acetone. And then we also end up with this chromium-4 compound. So the oxidation state of chromium has gone from plus 6 to plus 4 in our product. So if we want to, we can designate, we know that the alcohol has been oxidized, so this acetone is our oxidized product, whereas the chromium has been reduced. So that is our organic redox reaction. And it turns out that this chromium-4 compound can actually go on to oxidize more molecules of alcohol. So what we end up with in the very end of this reaction is all the chromium being turned into chromium-3. This is our final oxidation state of chromium. An important part of this mechanism is that we need an adjacent carbon that has a hydrogen on it in order to oxidize in this sort of E2 mechanism. So there needs to be a proton there to pull off in order to accomplish this reaction. So that is why on the first page, tertiary alcohols cannot react at all because there is no hydrogen on that carbon to pull off in an E2 mechanism. And similarly, with primary alcohols, there are actually two protons that we can pull off. So what happens is an E2 mechanism occurs, we oxidize it to the aldehyde, so just with a single carbon-oxygen double bond, and then we can actually form another intermediate and oxidize again to the carboxylic acid. Okay, so you're probably thinking correctly that that introduces a problem for us. So what if we want to synthesize an aldehyde using these chromium compounds? Because I just told you that primary alcohols overoxidize to the carboxylic acids. Well, we actually have more than one reagent at our disposal. So again, let's take our primary alcohol example, ethanol, and we want to make this into the aldehyde, and the reagent we can use to do that is called PCC. So PCC will oxidize this to the aldehyde without overoxidizing to the carboxylic acid. Okay, so what does PCC mean? It stands for pyridinium chlorochromate. And the way you make this, as just a tangent, is we start with pyridine, which is an organic base, very common. And if we treat this with hydrochloric acid, so we acidify it, and the nitrogen is, like I said, basic in this compound, so it will accept that proton from the hydrochloric acid. And in this case, we will form pyridinium hydrochloride. And finally, we react this with chromium trioxide, so our chromium-6 compound here. And what happens is that the chlorine incorporates itself into that chromium compound, and we end up with a salt, so we end up with pyridinium as our cation, and this chlorochromate anion. And it turns out that the chlorochromate is a weak enough oxidizing agent to where it will only undergo oxidation once, instead of overoxidizing to the carboxylic acid. So that is a very useful tool we have in organic chemistry. One thing I'd like to note is that the first reaction I talked about, which is called the Jones oxidation, using the dichromate anion and sulfuric acid, was used previously in breathalyzers, so it is no longer used in favor of more sophisticated chemistry. But previously, in order to test your blood alcohol levels, you would blow into the breathalyzer, and to test the amount of ethanol in your blood, so grain alcohol, there would be a small amount of the dichromate salt, as well as some sulfuric acid and water, so our Jones oxidation conditions and eventually we would oxidize that ethanol to acetic acid here, the carboxylic acid. So how could you tell how much ethanol was actually there? 
Well, chromium-6 compounds, which is the dichromate salt that we're starting with, have a characteristic red-orange color, whereas chromium-3, which is again what we end up with after the oxidation, is more of a dark green. So measuring how much green color appears will tell you how much ethanol was in your blood at the time. So that is how breathalyzers used to work. Okay, so I hope this video helped you understand the chromium oxidations of alcohols to ketones and aldehydes and carboxylic acids. Again, if you enjoyed this video or learned anything about organic chemistry, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And if you are able, please consider donating to my Patreon page, which I will link in the description, and that helps me to continue creating this content for you. Thank you for watching.